All right, I'm going to call the meeting to order. I've got 6 30. Uh, can I get a roll call, Madam Secretary? Mr. Gillum. Here. Mr. Lane. Here. Mr. Morton. Here. Mr. Davis. Here. Ms. Ditchie. Here. Mr. Beachman. Here. Ms. Andrews. Here. All right. Uh, item number three is a train presentation. Uh, Y'all remember we had an energy audit done uh, almost two years ago now, didn't it, Randy? Uh, and uh, we're finally to a point where we wanted to bring the findings of what was studied in our buildings. And so we have Mr. Randy Modlin, who most of you already know, have met before, and he's got a presentation for us tonight. Thank you very much for allowing me to be here. It's an honor, and thank you for leading our schools the way you're doing it. Uh, it's through what we've gone through in the last 30 months of our lives. Uh, you have uh, stepped up and being leaders in our communities for our public schools is very much appreciated. We thank you for that. Uh, first, I want to just go through a little bit of, and just what Mike was saying. We, we did the preliminary audit of your buildings. A lot has happened. We were kind of pushed back. Don't come yet. Don't come yet. So we, we want to be uh, cur courtesy and have the courtesy of your time for us. You had some big things on the agendas. So we're here tonight to present what our findings were as we went through your buildings and did this. So first, just a little refresher about what's going on in your building. Right now, your buildings, they're pretty much all on, okay? And everything I'm gonna to say tonight, it's nothing against your maintenance department, your operations staff. They're doing a tremendous job. He's coming in and he's taking over a lot of things and learning a lot. So we went through the buildings with the staff prior to the staff you have now. And so some of these things are still going on today. Just, we talked before about the lights and things, but. As you can see here, a lot of costs are happening right now in our lives. These meters are currently spinning. And what this program does, it takes these meters and slows them down. By slowing them down, that creates dollars that are already in your budget that you can get improvements done in your schools. Now, not only are we talking about right now, but what's going to happen in the future. Yes, our schools have just gotten blessed with semester dollars that you've done a lot of improvements with. However, you look at that highlighted line and you've got to start thinking about, okay, how are we going to pre prepare for the future? You can only prepare by hiring more people to manage things. That adds more cost, okay? How are you prepared? How are you operating your buildings? What sustainable future plans do you have? Because when you look and you see and what's currently happening when you see your energy bill at your home and you see how much it's gone up. Same thing's happening for our schools. Same thing with peak demand has even gone up even higher and that's creating a bigger payback, but the, also the next round of federal dollars that are coming out are gonna be mandated by the federal government that you're gonna to have to have them engineered for energy savings to be able to get the grant dollars. That's what trains gonna, can help you out with, okay? Is everything you're gonna see in this has all been engineered. This program is not a program that train thought of. This is a program that the United States government thought of rolling it out to our public schools, our public buildings. The state of Tennessee is we're working with them now on a program like this for the state buildings as well. Even so, the state of Tennessee has literally greased the skids for you to do a program like this, okay? This program does three things for you. It gets you new equipment, new controls, new technology, and upgrades for your buildings. It gets you drastic amounts of energy savings dollars. And number three, it does this without it costing you or your taxpayers a penny. The money is already there. The state of Tennessee wants you to do it as well. So that's how they, they emphasize and they push for you to do this and they give you some programs and we'll show you one here in a minute. But this is where it comes from, from your utility bills, gas, water, and electric. By finding the savings in those three areas, that's where we create this, okay? Also, we go after utility rebates that are currently being offered by TVA. They are another plus that you can get to go into this program, showing the energy and the engineered energy savings, and that's how they're able to approve rebates for your schools as well, to go into a program like this. What you see on the left is the dollar that you're currently spending. On the right, it's the same dollar, but this section right here is your savings repayment, and that's all guaranteed by train. What I mean by that is this, if I come in and I say, we can save you $90,000 a year, and we fall short, we only saved $88,000 that year, we write a check for the difference. 
If we say we're going to save you $90,000 a year and you save over that, every penny is yours. So it's the ultimate win-win, no-lose scenario for our public school system. And that's, that can benefit you and your bottom line. So when to use a program like this, you see all your needs. Uh, one of the things we went through your schools and we found there are some comfort issues in some of the schools. As Mike can tell you, he's heard about them for years. And we found that out too. But this program, by doing this, by using the dollars that the county has already given you, shows fiscal responsibility that you're doing the most you can with every single dollar that your county taxpayers give you for to run your schools. You get tangible improvements. This is not something that is a software-based program. This is not something that is going to be a formula. These are real improvements that you're going to see, that your students, your teachers are going to see, and they're going to compliment on that your classroom feel comfortable. The air is better. It's more balanced in the room. The lighting is better. The acoustics are better. You hear that from your educators in this program that we've done this in other counties as well. I was talking to some of you earlier, and I, what Train's been doing mostly this summer is more roofs than we have in HVAC work. The reason why is school systems have gotten ESSER dollars. The ESSER dollars can be applied to roofs. They can be applied to structure. They can be applied to windows and doors. So we're down at uh, in Perry County Schools. Our high school's getting a new roof, getting new windows, getting new doors. You think of train and you see the orange logo of HVAC is the first thing you think about. That's what we're doing at Perry County Schools. New lighting throughout the whole school system, standardizing on lighting. And that's how it's benefiting them as well. <coughs> so what we did, we went through your schools. And these are the schools that we went through on this. And here's some of the things we found. Right now, your energy savings, your energy is about 30% higher than the state average. Okay. And we found that target is right there, not just trains target, but that's the state average target. We've also found out that there are some performance issues with HVAC systems that you know about that you have that your staff identified with us. But one of the big things that we found out too is your your indoor air quality in some of your buildings right now and comfort issues. With like I said, what we've been through in the last 30 months of our lives, indoor air quality, ventilation, filtration has never been more important than that. So that's some of the things that we found there. Building controls, there's not a building control system, so your buildings are on right now. Building control system can take your buildings and set them back at night to a lower temperature or a higher temperature between the summer and winter. It can also occupy the building at different temperatures as well. Now, this is a program that's not gonna take this control of your classroom temperatures away from your teachers you can choose how you want to do this. We have some school systems that say the temperature is going to be controlled in the principal's office. That's fine. We have other school systems we work with. They want to have eight degrees of thumb wheel control in the classroom by the educators. So they can move, they set a set point, they can move it four degrees colder, four degrees warmer, all at their thermostat. So when you think about a program like this and you think the temperature is going to be controlled somewhere out of state, no. This is your program. These are your buildings. This is your money. So operating your schools here at Stewart County, different than Montgomery County, different than Williamson County, different than Humphreys County, and Perry, you're going to operate, you're going to choose how to operate your program. Okay? Um, let me go back to a couple more of these. Uh, one of the things we heard, actually, indoor, indoor air quality and comfort issues. As we went through the schools, we had teachers, principals coming up to us saying, are you here to fix the blank? Are you here to fix the roof? Are you here to fix the leak? Are you here to fix the air conditioning? Are you here to fix this? That's what we heard in a lot of schools. Okay. So what we found in this program, in our preliminary audit of the buildings, we found about $12 million worth of needs for the schools. All right. So that's a, that's a long-term estimate there. But what we found also, more of the immediate need was $4.4 million right now in the schools. There's some things that need to be addressed that are going to take some more heavy lifting in the schools to do. But right now, at our early stage, and before I equated it to a plane at 30,000 feet, we're at a plane at 20,000 feet right now. But we found $1.2 million of self-funding opportunities in the schools that aren't going to cost you anything to do. 
So with that $1.2 million, that savings in working with the state of Tennessee Energy Efficient Schools Initiative, <coughs> that's a program that they've got the money for you at half a percent interest. We do all the mathematical calculations for them and do that and show them, prove that how this is going to work. $1.2 million can be done in your schools. Okay. So is there an opportunity here? Yes, there is. Right now you're performing at $1.57 a square foot. We're saying what we can do using conservative numbers at this time, but you see that there's savings right there and get improvements in your buildings with no new dollars. The money's there. Train guarantees the program every year, okay? We take the savings, we do the calculations from your utility bills and from your meters. So we're not coming in saying that you're gonna to have to accept our program or our software to show you this. We work with your financial manager and we, that, and we reconcile this every year. Again, we fall short, we write a check. You go over on the savings, you keep it. We press the reset button and start again the next year. Okay. What we're saying right now at this early stage is we can get you to $1.27 a square foot. Another example that I can give you is Coffee County Schools. They were at $1.57 a square foot. Their last measurement verification audit that we did for them, the annual program, we have them performing at $1.06 a square foot. So their, their program is making money right now. Here's what we found when you look at the individual schools. You see building controls, you see some, you see lighting in there, you see some other aspects as well. But when I talked about the heavier lifting items here where the bullet points are, that's gonna need some more work. So we came through with our engineers but the next phase is going to be, the next phase of our program, the investment grade audit, that's going to be able to find these even more and the indoor air quality issues that we have at the high school. Those are the ones that have been going on for years that we talked about. Okay. With train, you get more. Okay. When you look at what it takes to go from a manufacturer to a distributor to a retailer, these are markups that are real that you pay for. With train, you can purchase direct from the manufacturer for HVAC equipment and building control. We have, we have strategic partnerships with lighting manufacturers as well to get you better warranties and better extended warranties on lighting. For example, LED lighting has a life right now between 22 and 25 years. Okay, So that means that light bulb is going to have a longer life on it. Here's what we offer. By changing out the, the lights to LED, we give a 10 year parts and labor warranty on that light bulb and that light fixture. That means your staff's not gonna have to touch a light bulb for 10 years. If they do, they give us their time, we reimburse for that. One phone call. So you're not having to call and run down the manufacturer of the lighting, it's all trained. It comes right back to us. And the, of course, the first thing you're thinking of, okay, how do you, how do you make sure you're giving us the best pricing? That's through Omnia Partners. The Omnia Partners partnership is not, it's a different purchasing co-op than others are. Other purchasing co-ops are what's called a pay-for-play purchasing co-op, where you have to pay a fee, or a company like Train would have to pay a fee to be able to be in that co-op. That co what Omnia does is they put all HVAC equipment, building controls, energy savings programs, they bid it out and train one of the bids on those. The state requirement was, it meets every state requirement. We've been with Omnia now for about eight years. We have not had <coughs> one audit finding in any school system in the state. The state auditors will tell you they like the Omnia program. State auditors like it so much, the state of Tennessee purchases through Omnia. So that gives you some more, removes some fear, uncertainty, and doubt about the program that it is well known and it is done. So what we are, where we are right now is this. These steps right here, train has done for you, hasn't cost you anything, okay? The program we pay for, if anything is, is short, we pay for, you go over, you keep. We talked about the guarantees on that, and the investment grade audit is the first financial commitment that you have in this program. So what this does is this, this is a sample letter of commitment first commitment the school systems will make in this program. 
This spells out everything and what you'd be voting on. We'll be voting to give Director Craig approval to go forward with this. The investment, <coughs> excuse me, the investment rate audit, what it does, it brings in engineers. It brings engineers and a third party engineering firm into your building. So what they will do, they go through thoroughly, they will see what we found, and they will see more. They will work with your staff. So they are an engineering firm, and they will be able to stamp all the information that we give you back. And what you get for the 94, look at the bottom paragraph, the first line, $93,511. What that does is that's the engineer the investment rate audit's cost for the third party investment rate audit firm. The only time you would pay that is if you perform the audit and you decide, hey, we'll take this and we'll do it ourselves or we're not going to do anything. The only time you'd have to pay that is at that point to the third party engineering firm. There's no markup on that from training. That's straight from the third party investment grade audit engineering third party firm. Okay? So you get a full assessment of your building. If you were to print out the paper, you're going to get about a foot of paper of everything that we go through with your staff, of all the upgrades that need to be done. This gives you information. That's yours. Okay, we're not keeping it. We get that's delivered to you. So the things that would fit in the program, you can do, but the other things outside the program, and if you wanted to put those out to bid, you got all your documents in that that you can just take it, put it right out to bid, and it's there for you. So that facilities assessment's done. You get a real handle on your buildings coming in now, and you get to see what, what is really impacting the building. Also, by bringing in that investment grade audit, that third party engineering firm, we talked about the airflow issue at the school, we talked about the high school, we talked about comfort issues in some of the other schools. They identify those, they engineer, not just put a quick fix in, but they engineer the solution for that, okay? So the only time you would pay that, like I said, is if you decide not to go forward. By going forward with the energy savings program for the schools, that rolls into the program. So the savings will be paid, will pay for that. So you're not having to write a check for that. Okay? So here's what it's costing you right now, not doing this program. This is what you're losing right now that's going, you know, you're paying for it, okay? This program takes a portion of what is going to your utility companies and brings it back into your buildings and gets you tangible improvements in your building. That's what this program does. The best thing about working with Train, you're not gonna be the first group we've done this with. You're not gonna be the first school system we've done this with. So what you'll see here is we listen to you. Your staff knows your buildings better than anyone else right now. What we wanna do is help them. This gives you a five-year, 10-year capital plan going forward by the investment grade audit. This program. The other best part about working with Train in this program too, if you talk to other directors of schools, it's been a program that has really worked out well for them because we don't come in and do the work and leave. And then six months later, if something goes wrong, you call up the company, they say, no, you've got to call this contract. Or you got to call that contractor. You got to find an electrical. You got to find a mechanical. Train is that one call because we still have that guarantee involved. So we stay with you. We offer support for your staff ongoing as well, where they can call. Right now, we're working with school systems that are adding to schools. They're adding a wing. They're adding two wings. They're adding this. We are now not their traditional way of doing business, where you have an architect and engineer. Now you have, they have an architect, an engineer, and an energy services company because they want to see how the building is going to perform going forward, how it's going to cost them utility-wise going forward. Instead of you sign a certificate, certificate of occupancy that day and it's yours. Train stays and train helps with the performance in the future. It gives you sustainability for this. Okay? Like I said, you're not the first this is a partial list of our school systems that we work with, schools, cities, and counties across the state. And right now we're working with the state of Tennessee too. So where we are in this, the first two phases are complete. This is the first step where you would say, okay, 
We want to go to the next level. We want to have an engineering firm come through and design and go through our schools, find where it's caught, where we're leaking money, find where the solutions are, engineer the solutions, and see this program make an impact for our schools. That's where we are right now. And train, you know, we're, we're not, you know about us, we got a pretty big plant just in uh, one county away from you. So we're not going anywhere anytime fast. We're a large company, we've got a great reputation. That list I showed you right there, not one client is a dissatisfied client. I can't afford, we can't afford to have one client upset with us because the directors go to the Tennessee Organization of School Superintendents meeting, the school board people go to the Tennessee School Board Association meeting, plant managers go to school plant managers association meeting. If they start talking saying, Rain did us wrong, we're done. This program would not work. And this is the most successful program in the state. Okay. Oh, one thing I do want to show you from the preliminary audit. Let's do this. So, oh boy, that up just a little bit more. This is what I'm talking. This 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 is the level of degree of financial <coughs> you'll see from train in the, in this step. So the audit results <coughs> that we went through. We went through the schools, and you can see these areas here of things that we have found. I mean, HVAC replacements, going, getting away from a two-pipe system in a school that's been causing you problems, uh, building control, building weatherization. You'll see these you know, at, the, at the elementary school even, a lot of HVAC that was defined and identified here. But what we do at this point is we come and we show you will give you a real cash flow model. Now that 1.2 million I talked about before is a conservative number because if you look at this and this, you'll see this, this number right here is a construction period. This $31,000 should be over here in a category by itself with no other cost associated with it. So what we're saying is during the construction period, we can save the $31,000 to your bottom line, okay? So then you start looking at what your facility savings are and how that goes over year to year to year. These are your years across here. Your annual program savings, and you can see how this is. And what we have factored into all these numbers are escalations from the utility companies, which are all in here. But here's the fun part I really want to point out. Your annual cash flow that you see, usually with this program, you will see some red numbers here in years two, three, four, and five. You've got a cash flow positive system here, program from day one, where this is creating a positive cash flow for you, so much so that when you go over and, you, and the state of Tennessee will allow you to go 20 years, what we see right now in this model is this program will pay for itself in 12.7 years, not one penny out of your pocket, not one additional tax dollar needed. The best part is this program at the end of 16 years, that's the state of Tennessee EESI program, your $325 cash flow positive your bottom line, okay? Now, the other thing I do want to point out is at this early stage, we have zero dollars in here for TVA rebates, okay? The other part too I want to point out as well, that yellow box there was this customer down payment. Some school systems are taking ESSER dollars and putting them there into the program with, it's, a, it's a cash down payment. We recognize that, the state recognizes the ESSER dollars as a cash down payment too. So my point in saying that, Perry County Schools had a program that was about $980,000, okay? The ESSER dollars that they put in, they put in $4 million of ESSER dollars in the program. They got almost $6 million worth of work done in their program. That's how financially it worked for them, okay?
That's all I have. I've done a lot of talking for you, I know. Any questions you have? I've been trying to present this to you for two years. <laughs> recommendations as well from each school I mean, yeah. what, what you had broke down I mean be able to see you know exactly black and white what we have going on yeah yeah we do that we, we met with Mike we, we met with Jamie as well we've met with uh, and gone through this and said and, and some of this what you see here is a result of those meetings that we've had where we move some things around to see take out this, put this in, how does that impact the cash flow? Take that out, put this one back in, put the other one back in, how does, that, how does that impact the cash flow? So it's a live working document. And so it's very interactive and gives you a lot of information there. And you said those numbers was without any kind of rebates from PBA. Exactly. So it could be potentially more. Everything you saw tonight is conserved. And like I said, and I use the analogy, playing 20,000 feet, that's where it gets in there. Now, and also the state of Tennessee, what they have through the EESI program, they have a technical advisory council. What we have to do, we, have, we meet with them, the technical advisory council and state engineers and engineers from the engineering community in the state of Tennessee too. We take them through this. We have not been rejected one time by the state of Tennessee. But, and even to show you more, the last three rounds of money that the state had, train captured every single dollar that they had available for other school systems through the EESI program. So this is, I wanna remove a lot of the, the fear, uncertainty, and doubt that they have about this. You're not the first one doing this. There's a lot of directors, there's a lot of other school board members that'll tell you this program's worked well. Uh, one, of, one of the great quotes I've got was from Williamson County Schools. You know how fast Williamson County is growing. Their, their chair of education on their school board ran into a director of schools from Franklin County Schools. And he told them, with Train's program, we're saving money, we're paying less for utility dollars today than we were five years ago, and we've opened four new schools. And they're still spending less on utilities. The next step of the program is your approval to move to the investment grade audit. That's the next step for, for you. If, if, we, if we agree to this, yep. everything works out fine, we're at no cost. No cost to us. No cost. The only cost would be if we did an audit and then we decided not to do it. That's it. It's a win-win program for our schools offered by an $18 billion company with 100% positive reviews from our clients across the state, and it's all guaranteed. All right, anybody got any more questions? Well, we thank you, Randy. Thank you, it's a pleasure. I appreciate your time, and thank you again for your leadership. Sorry. Thank you. I don't know the board's director before. Uh, I'll save it for the uh, interim board meeting. All right. Can I get a motion to adjourn? Motion. Can I get a second? Second. Second. I'm just All those in favor say yes. 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 All those opposed, no. Yes, it's have it. We're adjourned for the work session. Can I get a roll call, Madam Secretary? Mr. Beecham. Here. Ms. Sanders. Here. Mr. Gillum. Here. Mr. Lamb. Here. Mr. Morgan. Here. Mr. Dykes. Here. Ms. Fitchie. Here. All right, uh, item number three is open public comment. And uh, I'd just like to remind everybody, board policy is, it speaks to the open public comment about, you have to be discussing something that's on the agenda. So I just wanna remind everybody, that's what the board policy says. That being said, I have a couple of names here. Uh, I think, Mr. Beecham, do you wanna to speak to 
So these two here, Miss Audrey Jensen and James Perry? Yes. Um, I ask, I met up with Miss Audrey uh, at the farmer's market last weekend, um, and she was out raising money for the school sector that she talked to us about in the last meeting. But she mentioned about James Paris, which is back here. He's an EMS liaison. Uh, he works through, is it Tenova? Yes, that, that's right. Works through Tenova. But anyways, he had told her about a program that they had. Uh, I'll let him explore on it a little bit more. But and it, it, it essentially is, it, it backs the Stop the Bleed program. Um, we all know about school safety and, and the need to really press as much as we can on it. So I would ask you if you would suspend the rules to let them to have a, uh, a, a quick talk on the program that he has worked on and Miss Audrey has worked on. All those in favor of suspending the rules to allow them to talk, say yes. 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 Those opposed, no. All right, yes, it's happened. Okay. Audrey, James, you mind if you um. Tell them what you so I was just following up from the last board meeting. Um, thank you guys for your responses. I think everyone has been really receptive so far as far as school safety. Um, we've been I've been out in the community trying to get more resources to support. A lot of these resources, such as James with Tenova, um, are free to us. So we just have to utilize them. And I spoke with the director, and he seems real receptive. So we're coming up with a plan. Um, what else do I have? Um, and we also have gained some support for donations for the SROs that we'll be going to the Sheriff's Department at the end of the summer with the help of school safety. Um, I have a survey going out to parents with comments um, as far as if their children feel safe when returning to school and what are their concerns. About two thirds of the parents feel like their kids are safe going back to school. And the concerns that, that have been expressed, this district is already addressing those with training and such as this. So we are doing pretty well there. Um, I would just like to see prior to school starting that um, we do a, a building assessment, make sure our doors are locking, you know, good, <coughs> the buttons in the rooms are working, those basic things, and I think we have a good plan for now. Um, so, James, if you want to talk about what you can offer, that'd be great. You want me in the summer room? You're fine. Don't break any rules here. I want to make you comfortable. Well, thank you all for the opportunity to come speak to you. Again, my name is James Parrish. I'm from Tenova Healthcare, Clarksville, Tennessee. Uh, that's who I am. What do I do? I'm the EMS liaison. I do a lot of community education. Um, so uh, with that, there's two educations that Tenova Clarksville uh, offers to the community. First one is hands-only CPR. It's basically layman's CPR, teaching a four-year-old all the way up to an 84-year-old how to do chest compressions on an individual who is suffering coronary artery or uh, coronary pulmonary resuscitation CPR there is no mouth-to-mouth -mouth, it's just straight chest compressions <coughs> but I'm proud to say since 2018 we have taught 9,000 people this technique so in 2019 I also got the opportunity to uh, visit this program called stop the bleed stop the bleed was developed in 2016 unfortunately after the Sandy Hook school shooting um, it's one of the largest school shootings that have happened in American history with the most casualties to date. What we have discovered through what's called after action reviews or AARs is that the, uh, the, of the 26 individuals who perished that day, 13 of them could have been saved if someone knew how to apply pressure, pack a wound, or apply a tourniquet. So four committees came together, the Department of Defense, i.e. the Army, the American College of Surgeons, the American College of Emergency Room Physicians, and the National Association of EMTs, your paramedics, your EMTs. Right? They came together, they formed this program, they call it Stop the Bleed. Basically what Stop the Bleed does, it's a one hour education. It teaches individuals how to hold pressure on a wound. It does not have to be a gunshot wound. It can be a lawnmower accident. It could be a kitchen knife uh, cutting onions in the house. Any type of accident where uncontrollable bleeding is happening. You apply, we teach you how to apply pressure. If the pack, uh, holding of the pressure does not uh, work, we teach you how to pack the pressure, or pack the wound and apply pressure. And then if last but not least, you have to apply a tourniquet, how to properly apply a tourniquet. Every individual who attends this class is certified, is put into a national database that allows them to buy a tourniquet from a reputable business, all right? With that, they also receive the certificate that says, I know how to do this. It protects them under the Good Samaritan law. 
Meaning, if they actually if they put a tourniquet on the correct part of the body, they are protected under the Good Samaritan law. If they put one around the neck, not so much. All right. So uh, basically, what I did in 2019, um, I wrote a grant. I was very very zealous. I wrote a grant and I wrote it for Stewart County. Why did I write it for Stewart County? Because 15 years ago, in the little building back behind here, you guys used to call it the high school garage. I only know it as EMS Station 1. I applied for an application, or put my application in, Greg Barrow hired me. I didn't know anything about Stewart County, but I quickly fell in love with Stewart County. The people were amazing, the community embraced me, taught, kept me as one. I grew up in the medical world, I went on to Vanderbilt, I graduated from Vanderbilt with a master's in cardiology. I am now a registered cardio-invasive specialist, that is my title, but I had an opportunity to come back. I've come back to you. I had a grant in 2019. I bought four of these kits for you, all right? Inside these kits, they're a wall mount. Inside the wall mount, there's a tourniquet kit. Inside this tourniquet kit, are 16 tourniquets. Now, what will these 16 tourniquets do if needed? These 16 tourniquets could possibly save a life. So, all I need from Stewart County is the opportunity to give you one hour. Just give me one hour. I give you the education free of charge. I can come back three weeks from now. I can come back three weeks after that and teach six more people. You got one person that comes on in 12 weeks, I can come teach that one person. There is no limit on the number of people that I can teach. I am the leading instructor in the state of Tennessee for Stop the Bleed. I've taught almost 500 people this year how to do this. I go from Boy Scouts to churches to civic organizations. There is no charge for this. Again, zero charge. The money's already purchased for you. The money has already been bought. The items are here. Four of these kits sit in my office, but I can't give them to you until I get one hour of your time. So I just need one hour of the school's time with the teachers any of the administrative team, one hour, sit through this class, we do it, we put this book, or we put this up and we hope it collects dust forever and ever. Okay. Any questions? How much of a group can you do at one time? I can do up to 30 with one kit. I have opportunities to get up to three kits. So I can teach probably up to 90 to 100 people at one time. Not well, you thank, you guys. thank you. Thank you for your chance. You. For a chance to talk to you. Appreciate it. Thanks for calling Yeah. All right. Uh, Kate, you look you fade. Yes. Um, I didn't know there was supposed to be something on the agenda, but I'm a school bus driver and I'm concerned about the, the meeting drivers. And so one of the reasons why I'm here is because some of the drivers, like me, we would like to be able to work more than 16 hours. And so I think there are other people who would like to be drivers, maybe even who work for the school system, but they can't be drivers because they have one position. The teachers can do it. The teachers can be a driver and they can do their teaching job, but we are not allowed to do that. And I'm, I was told it was because of the Affordable Care Act but there was a position that I could have taken this summer that would have been at North Stewart. And I have my qualifications here. I would have been a very good person to be able to take this job because it's working with students that are needing to help be, have, be helped advance. I've worked with special ed kids. I've worked with regular ed kids, but because I can't work more than 16 hours, I wouldn't want to buy your insurance, but I surely would like to be able to work more than what I work. All right, thank and you, ma'am. And that's all I wanted to tell you, you. It's not just me, but there are other people who sub, and they sub two days out of the week, but they could be permanent subs. And so there might be people in the, in the new, um, there's young men in your department. Who knows, maybe those young men, because our mechanics, Thank my you. goodness gracious. Thank you, ma'am. They, they work over. Thank you, I appreciate your time. 
and I'm sorry if I didn't follow your your, your rules. All right, uh, item number four is the approval of the minutes from uh, June 27th, 2022 for the call session. You've received that in your board packet. Is there any objections or corrections to that? All right, can we get a motion to approve? Motion by Mr. Gillum. Second by Ms. Sanders. All those in favor say yes. 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 Those opposed, no. Yes, it's happened. All right. Uh, item number five is the consent agenda, and uh, I'm going to let uh, Director Craig talk about that for a second. These are all, the, <clears throat> you know, I'll try to get all the schools to get their fundraisers in at the same time, so they're not going through it all year, and this time they did it. Uh, there's two, though, that we need to take out because uh, we need to have a permit to do these two fundraisers. I was made aware of. So uh, there's one, the concert raffle that the band has. We on need the to, second page. On the second page, third one down. We need to strike that one if that's okay. Sharing it. Are you I'm not sure. We'll have, we'll, have to, we'll have to see we'll have to approve the consent with the changes. Okay. And then the volleyball raffle and getting cooler. And there's a permit we have to file for with the state because raffles are considered gambling. Is that correct? Yes, sir. That is true. And so, but usually schools get that. I mean, if you're a nonprofit or a school, we just haven't put the paperwork in. And once we do that, I'll bring it back to you on, in August. But besides that, I, pr I recommend and I approved all of these uh, fundraisers for the school. All right. So this is pretty much everybody's, everybody's. <coughs> it better be. Okay. I'm sorry, I'm just kidding. No, no, it, no, no, no. It, it should be all. Except the one you got to bring back. Don't forget right. that. The ones I got to bring back. And yes. I'm sure as yes. the year goes on, you know, there'll be spots where people will want to, they'll think of something and then, but I'll try my best to limit that. That's why there's so many on this. All right. Any more questions? Can we get a motion to approve with the changes made? I'll make a motion. Motion by Ms. Fitchew. Second. Second by Mr. Beecham. All those in favor say yes. 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 So the vote, no. All right, we have it. Let me do this fast. Item number six is the approval of the uh, occupational therapy uh, physical therapy contracts. These are this Ms. Crane, would you like to speak to them? Um, yes, these are just renewed every year. Um, the OT contract for occupational therapy is through Stellar. And then the, uh, no, I'm sorry, I take that back. That's the PT. The OT is through uh, Full Spectrum. And then there's also an agreement in there with Rebecca. Um, yeah, that's the next thing on the Oh, okay, screen. sorry. You want me to go ahead and speak to that to your way? need to wait on that. Okay. Anyway, the OT and PT services were required by law to provide those services for students who meet the requirements for those in the school system. And we have about 65 students total that receive either OT or PT. Have we seen, is there any big changes to the contract? No, they're not. I, I sent them to Charles to review. Robin, is this pretty much um, normal for the amount of students? Is this more or less? Yes, it's, it, it's I mean, it's reasonable. Okay. Um, Full Spectrum did go up a little bit this year on their price. They have, we've been in contract with them for uh, five or six years now, and this is the first time they've gone up, but with gas prices and, and all that, I mean, she felt like she had to. You said 65 students. Mm -hmm. And that's both OT and PT, right? Yes. Okay. Have you seen any issues with uh, not getting it, not being able to get to get the, the PT and the OT done? No, no, they've been fantastic to work with. In fact, um, 
Courtney, our PT, she had a she had the young child who was sick for a couple of weeks and she had to be out for two weeks. So when they're out like that, they make up those services. So they make sure that they don't miss any. And they keep a log and turn it into me every month. So any more questions? Can I ask for a motion to approve the contract? Make a motion. Motion by Mr. Lamb. Second, Second by Ms. Sanders. Uh, can I get a roll call for this, Madam Secretary? Mr. Lamb. Yes. Mr. Morgan. Yes. Mr. Dacus. Yes. Ms. Fitzhugh. Yes. Mr. Beecham. Yes. Ms. Sanders. Yes. Mr. Gillum. Yes. All right. So yes, I have it. All right. Item number seven is the approval of the MOU. Okay, this is a maintenance of understanding agreement with Rebecca Britt. She is a um, supervisor in Clarksville, Montgomery County, and she has her gifted endorsement to work with gifted students. Since we do not have a teacher in our school system that has a gifted endorsement, we are required by law to have um, someone who does have that endorsement work with our teachers here. So this agreement with Rebecca, she'll just collaborate with my teachers once a month for 30 minutes or so and charges that rate. She does the same thing with Houston County. <coughs> My hope is Sunday we'll have a teacher that will come in with a gifted endorsement or will want to get a gifted endorsement, but right now I don't have that. If you do that, will we have to cancel this contract? Yeah, we, we do that year, for, year by year, year so by if year I ever year. have one, yeah. And Rebecca used to live here years ago. And I think she actually worked in the school system some. Some of you might know her. Charles, did you get a chance to look at this? I don't remember looking at it, but I mean, I'm glancing over it. it I mean, it's got a 30 day termination clause in it, so that's the city of St. Christopher's board. So, I mean, it is an annual contract. So. It's got a $4,000 cap, too, yeah. so we, we're not going to spend over $4,000 for the year. Any other questions about it? Can I get a motion to approve the MOU? I'll make a motion. Motion by Ms. Fitzhugh. Any second? Second. Second by Mr. Beecham. We get a roll call on that as well. Mr. Gillum. Yes. Mr. Lamb. Yes. Mr. Morgan. Yes. Mr. Dacus. Yes. Ms. Fitzhugh. Yes. Mr. Beecham. Yes. Ms. Sanders. Yes. All right. You guys just have it. Item number eight is approval of policy changes. Mr. Director. Uh, this past legislative session of our state legislature, there were almost too many bills introduced to even comprehend that dealt with education. But many of the, these laws that were passed uh, require us as a, as a school system to tweak or even change our board policies to be in compliance with the law. So uh, a few weeks ago, Mr. Gwynn, myself, and uh, Ms. Perrigan uh, went through uh, all, the, all the laws that were passed and how they would affect our school system. And we came up with, uh, and we went through and, and we're trying to, uh, we bring before you the changes that are recommended from TSBA and all these policies that we have changed uh, I think with the exception of one, and I'll go through them with you, uh, were recommended by the, were modeled after the TSBA policy, and they will bring us in line with uh, state law. And I can go through these, if it, and as I go through them, if you want to ask any questions, I'll do my best to, to answer if that's all right. Uh, board member, first one in your packet, I think we're all the same. The board member, legal status would be the first one there was uh, and, and in these that uh, we gave you an old, the old policy and you also have the new policy and as you can see uh, there were just very minor changes in le uh, the status uh, of course uh, the main thing that was different is what happens uh, if there's a vacancy uh, if there's a vacancy on the school board then it goes it's filled by the uh, local legislative body, which would be our county commission, and that appointment would um, would continue and through through the next 
regular election. So that's just a, a clean, cleaning up of uh, what, what it means to be a board member and what you have to do. Bids and quotations will be the next one. State law now allows school systems and governments to uh, raise the minimum amount that you have to uh, let bids on. Currently it's $10,000. The state now allows, a, a, if you change board policy, we'll be able to raise that to $25,000, which I recommend because 10,000 is not a lot. Like for example, if, if we have a, a lawnmower, one of our commercial grade lawnmowers go out, we would have to let it out to bid, wait three weeks to get one because it's over $10,000. Now, what it does say is that anything, uh, anything like that that we would spend over 10,000 or, or up to 25,000, excuse me, that we would, we would go out and get three quotes. So it wouldn't necessarily be bidding, but we would get quotes for anything like that and then pick the best one that meets what we need. So that was the next one. Emergency preparedness plan. This has been in policy for years. There's one change in that one. It now uh, requires, state requires you to have what are called remote learning drills. Uh, they have given a little more leeway on how to use, uh, use remote learning, but they require us now that we practice once a, a semester uh, a re remote learning drill. And that's not that we're gonna send all the Chromebooks home and have everybody log, up, log in from, from home. The, um, we can do that at school, uh, just take a few minutes uh, a semester and have all the kids log on it to Google Classroom. So if we do have to close school down for whatever reason, we can continue to have school remotely. Uh, the next one's on credit recovery. The, the main thing that uh, was a change on that, uh, well, there's not much change, but it was uh, the the uh, grading uh, district. It just the, the students would get a, a 70 if they pass the credit recovery. It allows students who fail to uh, to make up work and then get credit for that, so they don't get behind as far as in high. It's basically for high school. Virtual education program. This is totally new, and, and I don't want to. I don't want to, I don't want this to come across like we're gonna have a virtual school that has nothing to do with that. We, we decided last year that we weren't gonna have a set of a virtual school, but what it does is it allows you to use virtual education in certain situations. For example, if we did have uh, 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 you know, a, a large number, let's say you know, 500 kids out of school for whatever, it could be the flu or whatever. And we can continue school uh, by through virtual remote learning. Also, it allows you to use uh, remote learning for homebound students. It allows you to uh, use uh, remote learning for students who are quarantining. Uh, if they're an alternative school, if they're too dangerous to be to come to school, we could put them on virtual programming and they would have to stay home. Uh, and then of course number five it says that and then it has all the requirements and what you could do to remove somebody from that program and I'll answer questions at any time if anybody has any. Well Mike this is new this one is a that, that this brand is new. brand new the mm -hmm. TSBA. Yes. Okay. And the next one's on selection of instruction instructional materials other than textbooks there's the old policy the new policy gives you the outline on if somebody has a uh, has an objection to what something we're using that it goes through the steps that they would have to go through to get that in front of a committee to then determine whether or not we continue to use it and then it would come to the board and y'all would the board would decide uh, we're gonna keep using it or we're going we can't use that anymore. Okay. This next one is the reconsideration of instructional materials and textbooks. We already have this on file. Uh, the new one, uh, generally, it just gives you the, the, the uh, procedure for filing complaints on, on uh, 
library materials. Okay, and then uh, and what the, and then having a committee to review any complaint and then to uh, make a decision, and that decision could go to the uh, could be appealed to the school board. Again, this is just the books that we have in our libraries. Uh, if somebody has an issue with them, they, this gives them an avenue to to uh, to make an objection to that. Mike, can I ask you a question? Mm -hmm. um, who, you may not even know, who, who's over like the, um, the book fairs when they come in here? The library. Well, I mean, as far as, is there a committee or anybody that, that they have to submit through to the state? Not that I know of. It's a fundraiser, actually, for the school. Okay. Uh, now, those books are, that's optional, somebody can buy those. And right. I, I'm sure they're all, you know, they're age appropriate for whatever school they're in. Scholastic is who the company that does ours, if I'm not mistaken. Okay, next one is use of internet. This is just uh, basically going through and, and again, just tweaking the, the rules uh, to implement procedures for appropriate internet use and, and what is prohibited, what is allowed, what safety measures that we have put in. Uh, if you've gotten an email from me lately, you'll see at the bottom there's this long disclaimer about you know uh, that this has all been checked for that we check for viruses and security the internet security uh that's part of the <coughs> we've already that was voluntary to do that we already started doing it but this is this outlines how we uh how we make sure that our internet's been used being used safely there's no fail safe i mean there's ways around believe me kids figure out ways to get around our firewalls we put up but we're continually uh making sure that that is in place. This, the next one is the, the biggest one, I think, that's a big change that the state has passed and it's up for uh, a review by the school board, which will be passed, uh, is the grading system. The state is, is requiring a uniform grading system. It's, we're going, we'll be going back to the 10 point grading system. So if you, if you look on the on the new, the new uh, policy that's being proposed, uh, 90 to 100 is an A, 80 to 89 is a B, 70 to 79 is a C, 60 to 69 is a D, and zero to 59 would be an F. Uh, the big change there is uh, a passing grade now, and, and what's, if we pass this, if you pass this policy, passing grade would be a 60 instead of a 70. That's a, and then an A would be a 90 instead of a 93. The, the, the reason for this, or the, I guess that's the right word I'm using, uh, is to have uniformity across the state because of the competition that's involved for scholarships. And universities hope scholarship, and then a lot of universities, they want to look, they, it helps to have a, a uniform grading scale. Mr. Craig, it, it didn't get the the meeting we were at, uh, they also said it was because a lot of surrounding states are, are, have, have adopted this, so that way when the student moves, say, from, say South Carolina and comes here, you know, it's not going to affect their grade. Exactly. So, that, uh, that's, that's on the grade set. Uh, separation from, let me make sure I read this one. It's got separation for tenure teachers. This is again is just uh, tweaking it. Uh, it even talks about non-tenure teachers. I think that's in the next one. I'm sorry, but this one there was very little change in those two policies. I'll have to get into it and see exactly what that change was. I'm sorry, <coughs> Chairman. That training that we did go to, uh, myself and Adam and the director, they they just glossed over all these all these board policy changes. It was because there were so many changes this last legislative session. They weren't able to talk about all of it. And then uh, there was other changes that had been made the day before. So they were 
which there was a lot of information for them. They had all the key points, like the grading. I mean, the yeah. grading was a huge for them. This one on the, really the one on the separation of practices for tenured teachers, there's not, there's probably just a few words that are different in it. And we, we, we brought this to the board because TSBA recommended that we uh, change it to come in line with the, uh, with the uh, state laws that have been passed. Now this next one is, is a little different, separation of non-tenured teachers. The only change here is you know, a non-tenured teacher, you, you don't have to tell them why they're being released. It's just, and it happens uh, sometimes, you know, when I first started teaching in Humphreys County, every non-tenured teacher every year got a letter saying you're not being rehired. And that was because they didn't have the budget finished. They wanted to make sure that they had, uh, uh, you know, the money to bring those teachers back. Uh, but what this, the change here is, if you let a non-tenured teacher go because of student enrollment reduction, does that make sense? Say, let's say that we have a, a teacher, we lose 100 students and we have to let go some teachers because we don't have the, we don't have the enrollment to support them then we can tell those teachers that why they're being let go and we can let the, their future employers know why they were let go. We can say, we'd love to have them back, but they were, we had to let people go. They were last for and tired, the first one's gone. And it just allows, to, that would be a case where you could tell them, t t give the information on why they were, were not being hired back. If that makes sense. I hope I made sense on that. The next one, vacation and holidays. This was not something TSBA did. This is something that we found as we were going through uh, a few years ago. Was it three years ago, Mr. Quinn? Longer than that. A few years ago, we, you, Pat, the school board uh, approved a, a uh, procedures or policies to use with 12 month employees. What, we're, what was in the procedures uh, did not match up with school board policy. So this is just the new policy is bringing in line the procedures that we are already using for 12 month employees. Next one's on uh, substitute teachers. Uh, talks about the certification what we pay, um, background checks, things like that. Uh, it's uh, just a few different uh, wording in there, but again, this one was recommended by TSBA. Attendance would be our next one. We did have to tweak this a little bit, uh, and this, is, this was needed. Um, Basically, it outlines the three tiers of attendance, uh, and I'll have to say, Ms. Perrigan, our new, our new supervisor of attendance is really working hard in making sure and putting together a plan where we attack an issue, and attendance in our schools this past year was an issue. We had high, high absentee rates, uh, higher than what we want. Uh, I think a lot of it had to do with, you know, we were talking about it this morning, uh, you know, we, we kind of forget at the beginning of this past school year, we were still, had a, had a lot of quarantines and things like that. Uh, you know, our, our chronic absenteeism last year was like 22%. And this past, just this past year, it's, I think it's even gonna be higher from what our preliminary numbers are showing. And it's, it's an issue that we have to, we're gonna need a lot of help from parents and the community to make people understand the number one thing about uh, achievement in our schools is being there. And, uh, and I think our, our scores sometimes reflect, uh, low, te low test performance reflects uh, lack of being at school. But this, this brings our attendance policy in line with state law. Uh, and it goes, and you, you, you've had a chance to read it. Uh, talking about the different levels, when we have interventions for attendance, when we uh, can take petition in court, which is a, the very last result. In fact, uh, that would be the very last thing we would do would be take kids, we're gonna try everything we can 
through hearings, or not necessarily hearings, but meeting with parents, meeting with students, those types of things. And that falls under our tenants' policy. Mike, I think um, going through this, I have parents that have older children that realize the attendance is a problem. And they've even mentioned to me they, they wish the attendance could be a lot stricter. It'd be a whole lot better on their discipline of getting them in school. So I think this well, is we're really- We're gonna help them out. <laughs> I, mean, I, mean, I, have, I have had them mention this to me because yeah, here's the, the, older the, kids talk, you know, and they know, <clears throat> You know that it's not been enforced and it makes it hard on parents too well, we were very lenient because mm -hmm. of the pandemic yes. and and i think and i've i've been well we'll call it preaching but i've been talking to our administrators principals and so forth about how we're going to have to tighten up and we're going to need support because uh some people don't think that's important and they know your business while my kids not in school and those types of things and we're going to need uh people you know, and I've, I've told Ms. Perrigan, and I think she's up for the job, that we need to, uh, we're going to tighten up. I think you'll have more support than you realize uh, from the parents. I hope so. I do, because I think with all the COVID and being out, I think they're ready to get back to the normal lifestyle. Yes, I do. Okay, attendance of non-resident students. Again, this is just tighten it up. Anybody that lives outside our school district, as you can see, has to be approved by, to go to school here, has to be approved by the director of schools. They have to pay a two, uh, tuition fee. Uh, they have to apply for 30 days in advance. Uh, anybody coming in from out of state on a case-by-case -case basis, and I will tell you that if somebody from out of state, living out of state, applies for our schools, I'll probably turn it down until we get we wouldn't get the money for them. And so, you know, that would be that would be something we'd have to, to look at on case by case. All these are case by case, by the way. Uh, and the tuition, Stacy, what's the tuition right now? 524 a year. Five, yeah, 524 dollars a year. And uh, you know, we we talked about raising that because we turn a lot of people away, believe it or not. Uh, you know, this summer I know we rejected it, uh, quite a few from Montgomery County. Did you say five hundred twenty-four dollars? It's three hundred seven. That's that's any any county from any county, right? Okay. Three dollars and seven cents a day. I might be off on that. It might be five point five. Okay, that's fine. Here. That's good. Now we do number six. We brought this in the line. If an employee of this school district has a residence outside the school district, his his or her children have may be allowed to attend and uh, we we have we do that. I mean, if we have somebody working in our system, I hope everybody would agree that their, their kids should be able to come to school. And so we, we, we already do that. Admission of suspended or expelled students. Again, just getting in line with the state law. Uh, if a student, and there's one exception, that's state custody, but if a student's been expelled from another school district, uh, they can request for enrollment here. Then the director of schools would investigate the facts of the suspension expulsion and then make a, make a recommendation to the board to approve or deny the request. And uh, so in other words, if somebody got kicked out of school somewhere else, we don't have to let them in for the length of that expulsion. That just codifies it into our, to our policy. Reporting child abuse. This one's been tweaked quite a bit, or, or a little bit, not, not a lot. Uh, this goes through and tells who, who has what responsibility. Uh, we, we've got coordinators in each school, alternates in each school, uh, and goes through the rules on, on what happens if there's a, suspection, a suspect of child abuse. Uh, and uh, just gives outlines how this should go about. All our teachers and staff are required to uh, are required to uh, go through the child abuse reporting training and that will be done on, during the week of in service with all our staff. Okay, the next ones come are are things that Miss uh, Elaine Jackson needed to be corrected in the school board policy in, in terms of student health. 
and it just re rewrote the, uh, the goals, the commitment of the coordinated school health, uh, our district goals, commitment to physical activity, and then there's a new the new part in here is the commitment to mental health on the on the uh, next to last page on this one, uh, and uh, how we will uh, how we will uh, handle that. Next one has to uh, do with, uh, I think I'm pronouncing it right, Luke John. I'm not sure how he's done. Diazepam, these are just uh, uh, allowing these drugs to be administered if there's a, an episode with a, with a child. Again, just trying to, to put into board policy what the law requires us to do. Then you get into our favorite thing, headlights and bed bugs. Uh, we have policy on that. The old one was very short. The new one uh, <coughs> talks about how the big change is the treatment and prevention procedure shall be dealt by, developed by the director of schools in consultation with the school nurse and distributed to all classroom teachers. And uh, basically it says what we will do when we do have headlights or bed bugs. We can't deny them education because of that, but we can treat and get, try to get that taken care of. I'll answer, that's all the board policies that we brought to you for recommendation to be passed, and I'll answer any questions if I can. Hold it. Anybody got any questions about any individual or as a whole? Mike, I'm a non-tenured teacher. Do, do we send out letters still? If like, you're not going to rehire. If you're not going to rehire, but you do, you do it not pertaining to the budget. It's if you're not going to rehire, right? So. If we're not going to rehire somebody, we have to inform right. them by June 15th by letter and by, by But not time. everybody gets one just because they're not. No, they're, we okay. don't do that. Okay. I mean, we didn't, there was nobody that we didn't rehire this year. Okay. I just didn't know if you just sent them out as a formality pertaining to the budget. I didn't realize because I knew you said that when you uh, taught Waverly, they sent them out. Mm -hmm. So I didn't know if, if you did it pertaining to the budget or if it was. Budget things are a lot different now than then yes, because right. we're required to have our budget to the county commission by a certain date. So. We have an idea of ways with before. students and everything. Yes, with the number of students. Okay. But we have it until the middle of June. Okay. To uh, let them know. Okay. You're seeing less and less non-tenure teachers getting let go because it's just the not the demand. I mean, uh, Dixon County, for example, he called me the other day. I uh, the director and said they had 14. I think it was 14 spots. Did I have anybody that applied here that would want a job? So, uh, you know, we're going to keep trying to get quality as much as we can. But yeah, that, that non tenure deal was just for, it allowed us, you know, originally we, could, we couldn't say anything. But now it allows us to uh, say we had to let somebody go because of budget reasons. I can call their superintendent and say, hey, the only reason they're gone is because right. we didn't have the money to keep. Okay, thank you. They didn't do anything wrong. Any more questions? Can I get approval for the policy changes? Or does anybody want to pull any one out or do you want to vote on the whole? Vote on hold. Okay. Can I get a motion to for the approval of the policy changes? Make a motion. Motion by Mr. Lamb. Get a second. Second by Ms. Sanders. Uh, roll call? Yeah, let's do a roll call. Ms. Sanders? Yes. Mr. Gillen? Yes. Mr. Lamb? Yes. Mr. Morton? Yes. Mr. Davis? Yes. Ms. Fitchie? Yes. Mr. Beach? Yes. All right, so yes, I have it. Uh, item nine is approval of the one four one budget amendments. Okay, Mr. Flynn, would you like to take the vote? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. 
Dr. Duffy. Yeah, Mr. Williams will pass it out to me since this dealt with uh, summer learning camp. So essentially these are the, the grants that were handed to us, allocated to us by the state to uh, fund uh, the summer learning camps. You have the transportation grant. It's a little bit different than what was in your packet. The reason I handed uh, you the handout. Um, the state gave us some more guidance on Monday about tweaking the revenue codes on the uh, summer camp for grades K-5 and then the bridge camp for grades 6, 8, and then the stream after school, the extra bonus hour a day for the summer camp down there at the bottom. They, uh, they, want, they gave us the percentage to break that up over two different revenue codes. So um, if you have any questions, let me know. Um, so the numbers in your original were exactly the same. It was just the revenue codes, different than what I handed out. How many kids do we have in the summer camp? So Mr. Craig, the numbers yesterday was what about 220 total K8. So the overall entry had around 120, North Stewart around 95, and then the middle school around 40. About 10% of our mm -hmm. student, po student population. And I think it was very successful. It was. So looking at pre and post test data was very good. Success was very good in the all right. Any questions? Can you get a motion to approve the budget amendments? I'll make a motion. Motion by Ms. Fitchy. Second by Ms. Sanders. Can I get a roll call on that? Mr. Beachy. Yes. Ms. Sanders. Yes. Mr. Gill. Yes. Mr. Lynch. Yes. Mr. Morton. Yes. Mr. Jenkins. Yes. Ms. Fitchy. Yes. All right. Yes, it's had item number 10 is approval of civil rights bullying, or approval of civil rights bullying program. Yes, every every year we're required to uh, make a report to the school board on our civil rights and bullying report. And Dr. Duncan is going to, if you'll look in your packet, there's a color legal sheet that gives you the uh, a graphic to look at. And Dr. Duncan's going to uh, talk to you about this in just a little bit. Yeah, like Mr. Craig said, each July we're uh, required to submit this to the state. So essentially this data is pulled off of Skyward from where the, the schools have entered their uh, discipline data throughout the year. And uh, uh, the questions on the horizontal axis are the questions that are in the report we submit. Uh, the thing, a little bit different, I did add 2021 data and 21-22 data so you can see a comparison of the last two school years. Um, then, you know, the first two charts were the total number of bullying cases that were brought to the attention of administration. And then number two graph was the ones that they investigated. And then the next one at the end, there were the number of cases that resulted in some kind of disciplinary action that was not an out of school suspension, which ranged from ISS to alternative school. So anything that was not a suspension. Any questions, let me know. Looks like we had a pretty good drop. I mean, from 15 down to 10, that's mm -hmm. pretty much down. Yes. All right, any other questions about that? Can I get a motion to approve it? Motion. Motion by Mr. Beecham to approve the Civil Rights Bulletin Report. Second. Second by Mr. Lamb. All those in favor say yes. 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 Those opposed, no. Yes, it's happened. Item number 10. Item number 11, approval of surplus property. This is the, uh, well, y'all seen the 1999 GMC box truck that the band boosters have. Uh, the reason it's brought to us because the truck is titled to the school system uh, for insurance purposes. So we, we're asking that it be surplus and sold with the caveat that all the money that is gathered from the sale of this will go to back into the band program. I have no idea what a 1999 GMC box truck would pull, but it's, uh, we're gonna put it out there and whatever money that they that we get for it, we're gonna get it back, put it right into the band program. All right, any questions about that? Can you get a motion for approval? 
Motion. Motion by Mr. Lamb. Second. Second by Mr. Gillum. Can I get a roll call, Hunter? Mr. Davis. Yes. Ms. Fitchy. Yes. Mr. Beach. Yes. Ms. Yes. Mr. Gillum? Yes. Mr. Lamb? Yes. Mr. Morgan? Yes. All right, that's uh, that. <clears throat> Item number 12 is approval of surplus property. And these are three mowers that aren't working anymore. And so uh, we can just sell them. So we're asking if they uh, be uh, put in the surplus and uh, put on job deals. And, we need to get rid of it, taking up space right now. Any questions? Can we get a motion? Motion by Ms. Sanders. Second. Second by Mr. Beecham. Can we get a roll call on that? Mr. Morgan. Yes. Mr. Davis. Yes. Ms. Beecham. Yes. Mr. Beecham. Yes. Ms. Sanders. Yes. Mr. Gillum. Yes. Mr. Lamb. Yes. All right. Yes, we better. Item 13 is the director's report. A few things tonight. Uh, first of all, just we touched on it a little bit was the uh, summer learning camps. We had uh, pretty good participation, uh, talk, going and observing and talking to teachers and, and being around students. They they really enjoyed it. The teachers enjoyed it. Uh, and from what Dr. Duncan just said, our post our pre and post testing during the summer shows that we made we're making progress. And this is going to be an important aspect of our going forward because of the new uh, third grade retention law that was passed by the legislature that students that are on grade level at third reading level at third grade could possibly be retained and this is one way to avoid that and hopefully the state in the future after next summer will continue to fund this program so i think it's a personally i think it's a great thing for our kids uh, and, and our teachers because they're teaching the way we had it set up uh, in, in the elementary schools are the, like the fourth grade teachers would be having the third the kids that just finished third grade so they got to be with the kids they were going to have coming up that year so it, it's a lot of familiarity and uh, just uh, uh, good things went on there uh, talk a little bit about safety i appreciate miss jensen uh coming forward and helping us with that uh, just to let you know that for uh, an administrator from each school and an sr and all of our sros will be attending active shooter training next week for two days in katie's we're lucky to get spots for our administrators to go it's an, it's a very in, involved it's, it's it's lined up for law enforcement but it's uh, 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 our administrators will be able to participate in and see what's going on. They even have one section of where they actually do a simulated active shooter drill. So uh, we're, we, we think we're moving in the right direction on that. Uh, I want to point your attention to something I put in your packet today uh, about the Hillsdale College President remarks about teachers in Tennessee. <coughs> Uh, what I gave you is the response that the Tennessee Organization, organization of School Boards, uh, School Board uh, Superintendents put out, our Board of Directors put out, uh, supporting our teachers, and I can't say enough how much I appreciate all of our teachers. Uh, and those of you who know me know that all I've ever known is schools. Uh, I was talking to somebody yesterday. And I, I, I'll be 56 in August, and from the time I was born, I was in a school, uh, even before, because my mother taught when she was pregnant with me in Stewart County High School. So teachers, I think, are, are being attacked right now, and somebody from out of state who wants to start a charter for our schools to say these things about our teachers, I think, is, is ridiculous. And I wanted to just put on record how our association feels about it and how we feel as a system and I know how y'all feel as a school board about our teachers and the job that they do every day uh, you know it's it's a it's an insult for somebody to say that our teachers come from the dumbest schools and the dumbest uh, departments within a university and uh, just want to let you know that that this is what we as an association feel and I hope that I know all of you feel the same way about our educators. So, and 
then the, the last thing I, 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 I've been asked a lot of questions about raises and bonuses and so forth uh, for our, our staff. Uh, plan to to have a, a proposal for the board in August uh, that has to be approved by the by the state uh, for using ESSER funds to uh, to give a one-time five percent bonus to our teachers. And I'm gonna have this together for us in August. And then uh, with, with the idea that after that bonus, that next, starting next year, we should be able to fund, make that permanent. So if we give a 5% bonus this year, that'll be reflected in teacher pay in the next school year. So just want to let y'all know that, that it is out there, that we are working on it. We have to get the, the plan that we're coming up with approved by the state because we are going to use that semester money for it. And then we'll bring it to the school board for approval. And I will <clears throat> answer any questions. Uh, that's all I have. Thank you, Mr. Director. Does anybody have anything else? Well, we're adjourned. Thank you, Mr. Director. Got a motion to adjourn by Ms. Sanders. Second, no, Mr. Bill. All those in favor say yes. Yes. Those opposed, no. All right. Yes, we have.